On July 30th, 2023, in the remote Ural Mountains of the Shelyabinsk region, Russia, 51-year-old Vladimir Cheskidov was apprehended following the escape of a 33-year-old woman from his residence in Smolino village, simply known as Ekaterina. She recounted her harrowing ordeal to the police. Since 2009, she had been captive by Cheskidov, confined in a locked bedroom with barred windows. She also suffered from repeated torture sessions and brutal beatings for the slightest perceived offences. Ekaterina had been kept a slave for 14 years in a makeshift dungeon, but there were still more horrors that she was forced to endure. This case stunned me. The fact that it happened just a few weeks ago makes me wonder how many more people now are suffering in silence, held captive. This particular case, however, is brutal. I also want to state that this is an ongoing investigation, so a lot of what I'll be telling you is alleged. But before we dive in, I want to let you know that I make videos weekly. So if you want to see my next one, please hit the like button on this video and subscribe if you are new. It really helps me out. Thank you. In 2009, at the age of 19, Ekaterina encountered the then 37-year-old Cheskidov at a bus depot. He offered her a drink and over time gained her trust, inviting her to his home which he shared with his mother, where he promised more drinks. However, upon her arrival, the grim reality of her situation dawned on her, marking the beginning of her horrific ordeal. Cheskidov immediately pulled out a knife and told her that she was now his slave and that she must fulfill all his desires and needs. Horrific. Vladimir Cheskidov remains an enigma, with little information available about his early life. Born on July 21st, 1972, he grew up in the village of Smolino, Chelyabinsk. His childhood home stands on Festvalnia Street, a humble wooden structure that he shared with his parents. From an outsider's perspective, his upbringing appeared ordinary, but Cheskidov struggled with forming friendships. Those who knew him described him as a reclusive individual, hesitant to invite peers to his house, often citing his parents' arguments as a reason. Upon completing 10 grades in school, Cheskidov's life took a dark turn. At the mere age of 17, he was convicted of robbery and served time in prison. Following his release, he returned to his native Smolino, maintaining his reserved demeanor and keeping his distance from others. In spite of his insular nature, he did manage to form a romantic relationship, eventually marrying a woman whose fate remains uncertain. Cheskidov's mother suggested she currently resides in Yekaterinburg. While still legally married, Cheskidov's path fatefully crossed with 19-year-old Ekaterina at the station in 2009. Cheskidov sought a young woman to abduct, particularly someone less likely to be reported missing immediately. This is why he went to the bus depot with alcohol in the first place, as it was known to be a usual hangout with lost youth. He chose Ekaterina because she seemingly came from a disadvantaged, low-income background, with what he considered to be modest looks, and showing a limp due to her club foot. He believed she would not be missed. Ekaterina shared an alleged chilling account with the police, 
detailing her 14-year imprisonment. She lived in squalor, confined to a dingy basement bedroom. A heavy barn padlock barred her exit, and the windows were sealed off with metal bars. Adding to her enslavement, she was physically chained to a table, limiting her movements even within the small space. On the rare occasions, Cheskidov allowed her upstairs to do chores like cooking, cleaning and tending to his aging mother. He would relentlessly follow her, brandishing a knife as a grim reminder of the potential consequences should she try to escape. Allegedly, whenever Cheskidov left the house, he would restrain Ekaterina in a torturous contraption of his own making, restraining her in a crucifixion-like pose where she could remain for hours. This is the device he made for the horrific deed. However, he rarely left her side. A man without a job, friends or any semblance of a normal life. He devoted almost all his time to tormenting Ekaterina. He was described as unkempt, dirty, repugnant, subjecting her to relentless abuse and assaults. Ekaterina later revealed that she had lost track of the number of times she had been forced upon estimating the count could be well over a thousand. The so-called bedroom where Ekaterina was kept painted an even darker picture of her captivity. Police discovered the walls scrawled with explicit content and an array of chilling instruments, including chains, muzzles and whips, meant for Cheskidov's twisted desires. For over a decade, she lived in this hellish existence, under the shadow of this monstrous man. He would often force her to consume vodka with him, followed by brutal sessions of torture and repeatedly being forced upon. It's tragic to think that in 14 years, no one was actively searching for Ekaterina. Her circumstances were bleak, her father passed away before she was born, and she lost her mother during infancy. Ekaterina lacked immediate family that may be concerned about her well-being and sudden disappearance. Allegedly, her older sister, who resided in the same area, did not act out of concern for Ekaterina's well-being, but out of practicality. Nine years into Ekaterina's captivity, her sister only sought to report her missing in 2018 when attempting to sell their mother's apartment. The necessity of obtaining a missing person certificate for the sale was her sole motivation. After filing the report, her next steps were purely procedural. In a harrowing revelation, Ekaterina shared with the officers that around a year after her abduction, Cheskidov introduced another woman, Oksana, referring to her as his wife. Yet, Oksana confided in Ekaterina that she was not his wife. In fact, Cheskidov's actual wife was someone he had lost touch with over the years. The twisted household consisted of five individuals, Cheskidov, his elderly parents, and the two women held captive. It is believed that the house was partitioned into two segments. One half was inhabited by Cheskidov's parents, while the other half was modified to imprison Ekaterina and Oskana, with one of the rooms specially fortified with bars on the windows to confine the captives. A horrifying incident from 2011 came to light when Ekaterina detailed a traumatic event involving Oksana and Cheskidov. While the two women were engaged in domestic tasks, 
Oksana saw a brief window of opportunity to flee and seized it. She dashed into the garden, screaming for help. Her desperate cries only served to enrage Cheskadov, who chased her. Before she could escape his grasp, he swiftly and fatally stabbed her in the head with a blade. Ekaterina, paralyzed by fear, could only watch in horror. Cheskadov, with a chilling calm, turned to Ekaterina and menacingly stated, if you behave the same way, you will get the same. In a further display of his heinous brutality, he pulled a hammer from his back pocket and used its claw side to repeatedly stab Oksana's lifeless body. The horrors didn't end there. Ekaterina described how Cheskidov then forced her into assisting him in dismembering Oksana's body. They cut up her remains with a saw and placed the pieces into a huge pot. Cheskidov then boiled the remains until all the flesh had been removed. It is impossible to imagine the fear Ekaterina must have been feeling at this time. If she was too scared to make a run for it before, she sure would have been now. Once the bones had been stripped of flesh, he placed them into a barrel and together they dug a hole in the cellar and buried the remains. In 2018, tragedy struck the Cheskidov household. When the father slipped in the home, it proved fatal. This incident seemed to exasperate Cheskidov's already reclusive behavior. He became more isolated, rarely venturing out of the house. On the few occasions when he did emerge, it was but for a brief moment, either attending to something in the yard or the garage, before quickly retreating indoors. Contrastingly, Cheskidov's mother, Valentina, remained the sole vibrant connection to the outside world from within the residence. Now at the age of 72, Valentina had once served in a psychiatric hospital. After retiring, she took up a modest trade, selling eyeglasses in the village. Beyond her entrepreneurial endeavors, Valentina maintained a passion for dance. Her sociable nature was well known and she was often seen engaging in friendly chats with neighbors. However, these very neighbors reported that while they frequently saw Valentina and occasionally spotted Cheskadov, they never caught a glimpse of any other woman residing in the home. The Cheskadov family might have continued to lead their veiled existence, harboring their dark secret indefinitely, had it not been for the events of July 30th, 2023. Cheskidov's drinking habits had been escalating for some time, and his demeanor was turning increasingly unpredictable and violent. That evening, perhaps intoxicated beyond his limit, Cheskidov suffered an aggressive episode, collapsing into convulsions on the floor. Both terrified and alarmed, Valentina recognized the gravity of the situation and the immediate threat it posed to her and Ekaterina. Urged by Ekaterina, who warned that if they didn't act swiftly, Cheskidov would likely harm or even kill them. Valentina, decided to call the mental health emergency team. As they arrived and began to restrain an agitated Cheskidov, he tried desperately to confine Ekaterina once more into her chamber. But the professionals, unaware of the entirety of the situation, but recognizing the potential danger, kept him from carrying out his intent. With Cheskidov being restrained by the mental health team, Valentina saw a rare window of opportunity and turned to Ekaterina, urging her to flee. This might be your only chance, she whispered. 
after enduring 14 harrowing years within the confines of that house, Ekaterina finally stepped into the outside world, a place that had become unfamiliar and alien to her. Her initial thoughts led her to her sister. Remarkably, she discovered that her sibling was residing not too far away. Upon reuniting, her sister, taken aback by Ekaterina's sudden appearance and weight of the story she relayed, quickly contacted the authorities to report the horrifying crimes committed by Cheskidov. On August 1st, 2023, the man now known as the Smolin Maniac stood trial. He faced charges of abduction, intimate assault and murder. When the judge inquired if Cheskidov had any objections to being defended by a court-appointed attorney, he responded, I can't afford to pay one. The lead investigator requested that the court proceedings be closed to the media due to the sensitive nature of the charges. Questioned on his stance regarding media coverage, Cheskidov replied nonchalantly, I have no objections. The judge ruled to keep the main proceedings private, but permitted journalists to be present during the announcement of the verdict. Upon Cheskidov's re-entry to the courtroom, a flurry of questions came his way. Initially quiet, he eventually responded, You all have a job to do, so get on with it, he muttered. When pressed about his guilt, he ambiguously said, Perhaps I am. As for what he was guilty of, he chose to remain silent. When asked directly, did you assault the girl? He flatly denied, stating no. His attorney swiftly interjected, stating that his client refrained from responding to the media's questions. Cheskidov was given a preventative measure of two months in a pre-trial detention center. After the decision was announced, Cheskidov began to cry. He claimed that both he and Katerina were in love and that this was all mutual, something Katerina strongly denies. He will remain here until his trial begins on September 30th, 2023. In the courtroom, Cheskidov's mother, Valentina found herself under scrutiny of the press. When journalists questioned her about her potential guilt, she responded, Katerina lived as she pleased. Our doors were always open. As the court drew to a close, journalists once again cornered Valentina. She maintained that Ekaterina had lived with them in luxury, even suggesting that the young woman's problems stemmed from her refusal to work. Though Valentina, under suspicion of complicity in the kidnappings, and is believed by many to be privy to the atrocities committed, she has not been formally charged and was released. She expressed her gratitude, thank you for letting me go, before being escorted away, although it is believed she may be charged at a later date. There are also rumours of other dark chapters in the Cheskidov family. The mysterious circumstances surrounding the death of Cheskidov's father and his former wife. Both deaths initially appeared to be accidental, but it has recently come to light that his ex-wife apparently fell out of a window and plummeted to her death. And with his father just slipping, these deaths are now potentially more sinister than first believed. That's the end of this episode. Until next time, stay sane.